Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we'll be talking about techniques that you can use to balance your active recall and spaced repetition for multiple subjects and topics at once. We'll be comparing Ali Abdal and Simon Clark's calendars against each other, and we'll figure out which one that you should use to organize your study routines. If you're new here, my name is Aman. I'm a student studying computer science and economics, and on this channel, we explore the productivity and study techniques that you can use to achieve your goals faster. Timestamps are in the description below. Let's get to it. If you're here, you should already be convinced that active recall is absolutely the best method to learn and retain something long term. And when combined with repetitions that extend over a long period of time, it makes for a killer strategy for all of your college pursuits. If what I'm saying is unfamiliar, go ahead and watch the last two videos. That's where I actually explain how I learn new content and what active recall and space repetition actually are. But now the question arises, when should I do my revisions and how far do I space them apart? And is there a methodology that can streamline this revision process while also helping me balance multiple subjects? Well, you're in luck because there's two great methods invented by two amazing YouTubers that can do just that. We'll be explaining the pros and cons of both of them in this video and hopefully after watching this, you have a solid foundation for building your own variation of these revision calendars. There are two generally accepted frameworks for revision. The first is called retrospective revision. Retrospection is related to looking back into and analyzing your past. And that's what this method is based off of. This method rests upon the idea that on the day of your actual revision, you'll look back in time, you'll look back into your past experiences and synthesize all of them together and decide what you're going to study on that day at that time. This system gives you a framework to really analyze your past and effectively pick a topic to study at that very moment. The second is called prospective revision. Prospection is related to looking into and analyzing your future. This method is based around the idea that on the day of actually writing your questions, on the day of actually learning new content, right then and there you schedule out into the future when you're going to study them, what days, weeks, and months ahead that you're going to go back and revise those topics. In this method, you will already have a list of topics to study every day, and those will be predetermined by you when you learn the content for the first time. Essentially, the difference is that retrospective revision calls for you to look into your past, and prospective revision asks you to chart out your future. There are benefits and drawbacks to both, along with implementations and effective methods to complete both revision techniques, so we'll go through that right now. For the last six years or so, I've been using the patented retrospective revision timetable method, and I've never looked back. Anyone else find that funny? No, just me. Never mind. I originally learned about retrospective revision from productivity and study YouTuber Ali Abdal. The way that he performs retrospective revision is he creates his own retrospective revision timetable in his notes, which allows him to analyze the past and uses a rating system to let him know what he needs to study at a certain time. I'll link one of his videos in the description below, so if you want to learn more from him, you can click that and watch that video. So right now, I'm in Numbers, it's the Apple version of Excel or Sheets, but any sort of spreadsheet system will work just fine. Basically, you can set up a retrospective revision timetable like this. On the left, you'd store your list of topics from whatever subject you're trying to study. Right here, I have a list of computer science topics from one of my computer science classes. Right here, I have the start date. The start date is the very day that you write your questions for a topic, if you're using Active Recall, or if you're not, the day that you actually learn a new topic. Then I have revision one, two, and three. These three revisions are your three spaced repetitions. So you can really do as many as you want, but for this timetable, I've just set out three for each topic. Let's actually populate this table with a couple examples, and hopefully after doing that, it'll be a little bit easier to understand. Let's say that today is August 1st, and today I learned about variables, so all I have to do is write down next to variables, August 1st. Right next to the date, you'd write down a rating from 1 to 10, which would actually let you know how you felt about a certain topic on the very day that you learned it for the first time. So let's say I had a lot of trouble with variables, so I'll put down a 4. Suppose tomorrow I learn about primitives and expressions, so all I have to do under primitives and expressions is write down August 2nd. And let's say I got that really well for the first time, so we'll give that a 7. 
I like to just color coordinate it because I feel like red is more motivating and green feels nice, but it really doesn't matter if you change the colors or anything like that. I'm gonna fill in a few more of the start dates and then we'll move on to the revisions and I'll show you exactly how you do those. All right, so I filled out some of the start dates and now we can actually get to some of the revising. So let's say that on August 10th, I am going back and I actually want to study some of the topics that I've learned in my class. Basically on the day of studying, on the day that you actually go back to revise it, you would look at all of this data that you have right here under the start date category and you would think about that and you'd think about, okay, if my exam were tomorrow, which of these would I want to study? And obviously you'd probably want to study methods because that's a two out of 10. So when you're studying methods, you'll hopefully go through the questions and after you're studying, you'll write under revision one next to methods, the date of studying. So let's say it's August 10th along with how you felt about that after you were studying it. So let's say that you actually got a little bit better at it and we'll put down a five. Let's keep doing this. So let's say it's August 11th and you are looking at your beautiful timetable and you're trying to figure out what you want to study on that day. Well, now we have some more data. We can keep on studying methods, which is a five, or we can go to variables, which is a four, which is worse than methods. So as you can see, it's probably more likely or more useful that I would study variables the next day because it's lower than methods. Because I'm studying variables for the very first time, I would write the date that I'm studying it under revision one, along with a rating there about how I felt about it after I studied it. So I felt a lot better about the variables, so I gave myself a seven. Every time you study, every time you learn a new topic and study a new topic, you would continue to fill out this timetable. So why do we use this timetable? What are the actual tangible benefits to doing this versus doing something else? Well, first of all, the pro of the strategy is that you're not actually locked into any specific timeline that you have to absolutely follow in the future. This means that you are truly flexible to study whatever you want, whenever you want on any specific day. A lot of the problems that I find with studying is that it's really hard to motivate yourself to study when you have 10 different things assigned for today and you're really tired and you don't wanna do it and then you miss one day and then you end up missing every day because you couldn't complete that one day. So this method really subverts that because you are assigning yourself specific topics every day so you can adjust them based on how you feel at the moment. That's a great thing because let's say that today's Sunday and I'm hanging out with the boys and I don't have any time at all. Well, I don't have to study anything because my schedule is not telling me to do anything. And let's say that tomorrow is Monday and all my classes get canceled so now I have more time, so I can fill up more time rather than having to stick with this rigid timetable. That's also the bad part about this though. When studying, we want to reduce the total amount of friction in between thinking about studying and actually studying. And what can happen is when we completely fill out this table and we stick to this routine for a long period of time, we can start to have hundreds of topics and thousands of dates and numbers it can be draining after a while to look at this huge display of data and figure out what you're going to study. And that can sometimes drive people away from doing it. Another problem with this methodology is that it can sometimes offer too much flexibility. So let's say there's an open day and you don't have anything to do and you sit down to study, but you don't really have an assigned thing to get done. It's your job to invent an assignment on that day. So the problem arises when you get distracted by something else the whole day, but there's no deadline or consequence. You have to impose that deadline on yourself. And it can sometimes be a little bit too easy to get away without doing anything because you haven't assigned yourself anything until you actually start studying. So that's the retrospective revision timetable. Let's talk about the prospective timetable. This is the exact opposite of retrospective revision. You give up that flexibility and freedom, but by doing that, you get a structured and regimented safety net that prospective revision provides. If I could travel back in time and slap two words into 10 year old Simon's head, it, they would be spaced repetition. I cannot stress enough how important this technique is. I originally heard about this method from physics PhD, Dr. Simon Clark. He's an amazing YouTuber and I'll link his channel down below. I came across his method in a video discussion between Simon Clark and Ali Abdal. I'll link that video down below as well. I took that method and kind of readapted it for my own purposes and converted it to a calendar system that you can use to prospectively revise all of your topics. So 
as you can see over here, I have a PDF of a calendar open. It's a pretty nice just August calendar. I just have it open in Notability so I can use my Apple Pencil to mark it up. But any sort of calendar, physical calendar or calendar app will work fine. I've designated this calendar my Clark's calendar, named after legend Simon Clark, who came up with this idea. In short, the way that this works is that every time you learn a new topic, under the date of learning it, you write down the name of that topic, the next day you write down the name of that topic, the next week you write down the name of the topic, and the next month you write down the name of the topic. This is a built-in space repetition mechanism and it works incredibly. I'll show you exactly how you do this. So let's say that today's August 8th and today I learned about variables. So what we could do is under August 8th, we can write down variables. We could also put down a rating next to it if that helps you out. Um, I usually try to do that. So let's say that I struggled a lot with variables, so I'll put down a three. Now I would go to August 9th, as you can see right here, and I would write down variables as well. I then go to August 15th, because that is one week from August 8th, and I write down variables. Finally, I would go one month from August 8th to September 8th, and then I'd also write down variables there. Hopefully you understand how to do this method now. Basically, you are just filling out this timetable. Every time you learn a new topic, you populate this prospective revision timetable with one day from now, one week from now, and one month from now. Let's say that I started primitives for the first time on the 9th, so we can write that down right now. And I'll give that an 8 out of 10, because let's say that I knew it pretty well. Now we'll fill out the next day, next week, and the next month. If you stick to this method and fill out your calendar every time you learn a new topic, over time, this thing is going to be filled with specific topics. The rest is simple. Every time you hit a day with a specific topic, you will just study that topic. You'll just do your questions for that day. Let's say I hit the 16th and I have arrays down and loops down as well. On the 16th, I would study primitives, arrays, and loops, and then I'd rate all three. And over time, you just have a schedule and you just have assigned topics every single day. Let's talk about why I do this and what the benefits of this are. The benefits of this are that you have a very structured, regimented device which just feeds you topics to study on any specific day. If you're someone who likes to stick to a schedule, who finds a very structured approach suiting to your own behavior, then this method can work out really well for you. It also follows the principles of spaced repetition really, really well because no matter what the topic is, you know you're gonna hit it three times with differently spaced intervals and that alone will embed the topic in your memory super well. With this method you're not thinking about oh what should I study today? No you sit down and do whatever's on your calendar and it just tells you what to do and takes care of all the thinking for you. So it's very low friction in between wanting to study and actually study because you don't have to think of what you have to do. It's a very organized and clean system for planning out your studying. What are the cons of this? Well, the cons of this are that you are giving up your freedom and flexibility. So if you come to a day where you have 10 different topics and you're super busy, well, you're out of luck because it's not a system that adapts to your schedule. You kind of adapt to the system. It depends on who you are. For me right now, during COVID, I have a bunch of free time. So I'm not really taken up by different things and everything is very structured. So this Clark's calendar works really well. But yeah, if you don't know what your schedule is going to be like tomorrow or a week from now or a month from now, it can be really hard to follow this Clark's calendar because it's really giving you exactly what you have to do. And it takes away that flexibility and freedom that the other calendar gives you. So what's the verdict between these two calendars? Which one should you use to maximize your productivity and academic proficiency? Well, it really depends on who you are as a person. I am someone who is very structured. I like to follow the same schedule every single day. I get up at the same time, eat the same meals, go to bed at the same time, especially during coronavirus because we've all been at home. It's been really easy to maintain the same schedule. So for me, the Clark's calendar has been really good because I know exactly what I'm gonna be doing a week from now, sitting at home, so I can easily schedule out exactly what I'm going to study. But when I go back to university, I might switch back to the retrospective revision timetable because that one offers a lot more flexibility and freedom. And when you're in college, you don't usually have an open day every single day of the week. 
So it really depends on who you are. If you're someone who doesn't know what they're doing tomorrow, next week, next month, it can be really hard to follow the Clark's calendar. So I'd recommend the retrospective revision one if you're like that. But hopefully after watching this video, you have the tools and techniques to build your own calendars. Maybe you wanna combine the two and come up with some unique creation of your own. Whatever is best for you is the best thing that you should do. That's all for this video. Let me know in the comments what you think, which calendar you're going to use and why. And let me know if you think of any interesting new calendar ideas. Check out my last few videos if you wanna learn more about active recall and space repetition and how exactly I learned something for the first time or take notes for computer science classes. But before you guys go, I'd like to ask you to check out manazer.org, my personal website and blog. Manazer.org is where you can check out any of our personal essays or blog posts. My brother and I run the website and we try to post some sort of new content at least once a week, whether it's book reviews to personal essays to blog posts. There's a lot of cool stuff that you can check out there. You can also sign up for Thoughtful Thursday, our weekly email newsletter. So make sure to check out manazer.org and please subscribe to Thoughtful Thursday. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. It really means a lot and I will see you guys in the next video.